गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन कैन यू प्लीज क्विकली कन्फर्म दी ऑडियो एंड वीडियो सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट दिस वेटेड सेशन ऑफ वन शॉर्ट रेडियोलॉजी रिविजन फोकस्ड ऑन एफ एम जी एग्जाम इन जुलाई जस्ट गिव मी अ क्विक थम्स अप वेदर दी ऑडियो एंड वीडियो इज फाइन सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट एंड आई विल ट्राई दैट इन दी नेक्स्ट टू आवर्स आई विल टेक यू थ्रू अ क्विक रिविजन ऑफ द रेडियोलॉजी विच इज नेसेसरी एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर दी एफ एम जी स्क्रीनिंग एग्जाम so just give me a quick thumbs up whether the audio and video is fine okay thank you all right so as we all know that in the fmg screening exam if you going to look at the radiology now this is how the questions have been divided one to two questions will be on identification on the name of the investigation two to four questions on the basis of diagnosis which is based on the image one question will be from nuclear scan one to two questions from radiotherapy two questions on preferred radiological investigation and three to five questions on radiological image with management of the patient so on an average 10 to 14 questions are going to be there from the radiology over a period of next two hours i am going to try that all these salient points are pretty well covered if i want to look at these are the important topics that are usually asked in the fmg screening exam chest x ray ivp barium studies <coughs> image of the pet scan ercp mrcp mcu rgu hsg radio sensitivity shape of vertebrae shape of heart shape of skull head trauma stroke pns aortic dissection pulmonary embolism edema pneumoperitoneum intestinal obstruction interception abdominal trauma ankylosing spondylitis and some of the pregnancy ultrasound you know these are the standard topics if you going to look at it which are frequently asked in the exam okay so dekho now let us start with it so this is the first table that i want everybody to remember all the pdf that i am showing it to you whatever that i am writing i will share it with you on my telegram group immediately after the class whatever i am writing i want to share it on my telegram group uh, so you can take this pdf from that particular place to so, dekho investigations ko we divide broadly into two groups ionizing investigation and non ionizing investigation a simple question but you have to remember what are the two in important investigation that are non ionizing remember this mri and ultrasound mri and ultrasound are the two important investigation that does not give any ionizing radiation in the ionizing radiation what we need to remember that there are certain investigation which uses x rays and there are certain investigation which uses gamma rays the investigation that uses x rays these are called as radiological scan and the investigation that uses gamma rays these are called as nuclear scan what do what do we remember radiological scans are anatomical scan whereas nuclear scans are functional scans radiological scans are anatomical scan nuclear scans are functional scan what are the examples of radiological scan radiography ct scan mammography ivp hsg mcu rgu angiography dexa these are the examples of radiological scan what are the examples of nuclear scan pet spect dtpa dmsa mag3 पर टेक्नेट एम आई बी जी सिस्टा मी बी हीडा बोन स्कैन ऑक्टोटाइट स्कैन सेलिनियम इथ्योन स्कैन थेलियम स्कैन एंड मूगा स्कैन सो वट इज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट दीज इन्वेस्टिगेश आर डन फॉर विच डिजीज तो पेट स्कैन इज डन फॉर ग्लूकोस मेटाबॉलिज्म पेट स्कैन इज डन फॉर ग्लूकोस मेटाबॉलिज्म ओके डी टी पी ए डी टी पी ए डी टी पी ए इज डन फॉर ग्लोमेरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन यानी कि जी एफ आर जी एफ आर डी एम एस ए इज फॉर कॉटिकल स्ट्रक्चर और स्कार दिस इज अ क्विक रिविजन यू हैव टू इमीडिएटली रिमेंबर द डी टी पी ए इज डन फॉर जी एफ आर डी एम एस ए इज डन फॉर कॉटिकल स्ट्रक्चर और कॉटिकल स्कारिंग मैथ थ्री इज डन फॉर रीनल फंक्शन रीनल फंक्शन ओके पर टेक्नेट Per technique is done for Meckel's diverticulum. Meckel's diverticulum. MIBG. MIBG is done for pheochromocytoma. If you have if you have attended my radiology class, 
this should be on your tips immediately somebody says mibg your answer should be sir pheochromocytoma system EP scan this is a bet that this is a prediction that this is gonna be there in the exam it is for parathyroid adenoma parathyroid adenoma okay HEDA scan HEDA scan is for biliary atresia biliary atresia bone scan bone scan is for osteoblastic activity bone scan is for osteoblastic activity okay octotide scan octotide scan is for neuroendocrine tumor neuroendocrine tumor selenium methionine scan is for pancreatic imaging pancreatic imaging okay thallium scan thallium scan is for myocardial viability myocardial viability and MUGA scan is done for ventricular function it is done for ventricular function or the ventricular contractility so in one one minute these are the important scans that we have covered there is one question from the nuclear scan which is a standard question that the examiner asks, and usually it will be from this particular list so this should be on your tips on the day of the exam without a doubt the second important chart that i want everybody to remember is how to decide any radiological investigation so the fundamental point that you need to remember is that the radiological investigations are not decided on the basis of diseases they are decided on the basis of the tissues that you are looking at okay so for example if you are looking at the bone and if you are looking at the cortical part of the bone you will do ct scan c for cortical bone c for ct Whereas if you are looking at the central spongy part of the bone which contain marrow, you will do MRI. M for marrow, M for MRI. M for marrow, M for MRI. Whereas if you want to see air, acute hematoma, calculi or calcification, you would like to do a CT scan. In any disease, if you want to see air, acute hematoma, calculi or calcification, I would like to do a CT scan. However, if you want to see neural tissues, ligaments, tendons, cartilage and muscles, I would like to do an MRI. If you want to do, see neural tissue, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, fibrous tissue, muscles, you would like to do an MRI. Okay. If you want to see fluid, the preferred investigation is ultrasound. The preferred investigation is ultrasound. Okay. But that will be the management decision whether it is going to be there on the YouTube or not. So, I would request everybody to finish it right now. And we will not wait. We will not wait. We will not wait. Tomorrow never comes. And I will revise it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. So, we will do it right now. We are going to do it today. Alright. Chalo. Now, let us come to the first investigation that we have to know. I think all of you can identify that this is a chest x-ray. Please remember, we are talking about a radiograph and what is the first point that you need to remember in the radiograph? That in the radiograph, there are three important densities that are seen. What are these three densities? Air density, bone density and soft tissue density. Air density appear black, bone density appear white and soft tissue density appear greyish. Air density appear black, bone density appear white and soft tissue density appear gray okay now the point to be noted is what is air density what looks very very black remember only air only air however if it is white it is either bone or stone it is either bone or stone now the point to be noted is if it is anatomical it is bone if it is non-anatomical then it is stone now in the stone if it is present in the lumen then it is calculus. If it is present in the tissue or parenchyma, then it is calcification. If it is in the lumen, it is calculus. If it is present in the tissue or parenchyma, then it is calcification. Please remember all this is applicable on a plain x-ray. On a plain x-ray. However, if it's a contrast study, if it's a contrast study and you are seeing white, Please remember, it cannot be stone. On a contrast study, if you are seeing very, very white, it will be either bone or contrast. 
either bone or contrast okay and what is grayish grayish is soft tissue please remember soft tissue is very well seen on the x-ray but the problem is individual soft tissue cannot be differentiated on the x-ray and this is the biggest challenge with the radiograph now let us see some of the images now everybody can identify this image quickly but what do you see write it in the comment section that what do you think is the correct answer we gonna be do lot lot of spotters and i am telling you a lot of them will be straight repeat in your exam so you have to know them comment me dal do what do you think should be the answer if your answer is correct that is the best thing if your answer is wrong i am telling you you will definitely mark a right answer in the exam so there is no harm in marking it so this is a plain x-ray if you see this is a plain x-ray this much white has to be either bone or stone this cannot be bone because it is not an anatomical and since it is taking the shape of the lumen what is it it is a calculus and which calculus this is a stag horn calculus this is a stag horn calculus on the other hand if you get this image in the exam this image is also a plain x-ray and this is again white again it is not a bone again it's a stone but it is not taking the shape of a lumen it is in the tissue so this is calcification this is calcification and the calcified kidney is called as putty kidney calcified kidney is called as putty kidney now who will tell me earliest who will tell me first that putty kidney is seen in which disease putty kidney is seen in which disease putty kidney is seen in renal tb putty kidney is seen in renal tb okay now tell me what is this investigation is it a plain x-ray no this is definitely not a plain x-ray why you can see this white white in the kidney ureter and bladder so this this white white is what this white white is contrast this is contrast and where is this contrast this contrast is in the kidney ureter and bladder and if the contrast is present in the kidney ureter and bladder the name of the investigation is ivp the name of the investigation is ivp because the contrast is present in kidney ureter and bladder now let us see this image what do you see in this image what do we see we are seeing again an ivp why because i am seeing contrast in the kidney and ureter but look at this ureter look at this pelvis this pelvis is dilated and the contrast is not going into the ureter dilated pelvis with inability of the contrast going into the ureter means there is a block here and if there is a block here what is this disease quickly bata do what is this disease kya lag raha hai it is a puj block puj puj kya hota hai pelvi ureteric junction block pelvi ureteric junction block okay now let's see more now tell me waiting for an answer from you kya lag raha hai what do you think is this investigation is it a plain x ray you say sir how can it be a plain x ray this much white has to be contrast this much white has to be contrast then i will ask you tell me oh wow yes tell me where is this contrast you will say this is in the urinary bladder and urethra urinary bladder and urethra i say yes agar urinary bladder aur urethra mein hai then what is the name of the investigation the name of the investigation is mcu the name of the investigation is mcu micturating cystourethrography micturating cystourethro graphy so this is a typical image of mcu or a micturating cystourethrography okay now tell me quickly what is this investigation immediately should come to your mind ki sir ye to ye bhi contrast study hai this is also a contrast study but what is the difference in this case the contrast was in the bladder and the urethra whereas in this case the contrast is present only in the anterior urethra only in the anterior urethra and if the contrast is present only in the anterior urethra that means the dye was injected from here and what is the name of this investigation the name of this investigation is rgu what is rgu retro grade urethrography 
RGU retrograde urethrography. So this is an image of retrograde urethrography. Now this is a cakewalk for everybody. What do you see? What is the investigation? What do we see? Where do we see the dye? The dye is present in the uterus and fallopian tube. Dye is present in the uterus and the fallopian tube and because the dye is present in the uterus and the fallopian tube, what is the name of the investigation? HSG. The name of the investigation is hysterosalpingography. Remember last year question, what is the name of the cannula used in HSG? Name of the cannula used in HSG? Leach Wilkinson's cannula. Leach Wilkinson's cannula. Okay. Don't wait for this session that you will see it later. Even if your friend is thinking, tell your friends to attend it live. Because live session do ghante mein complete ho jayega. Baad mein dekhoge, then you are gonna be spending more time on this. And if you are thinking that you are gonna do it in 2x, you will not be able to do the session in the 2x. So you have to do it in 1x only. So it is better to attend it right now. Okay. So Leach Wilkinson's cannula. All right. So now let us take one step forward and let us see this image. Examiner is going to ask you, tell me the name of this investigation. And then you're going to say, oh, I can see a contrast. Where is this contrast? And if you see it carefully, how can this elongated structure be there in the body? And I will say, oh, this looks like an esophagus. Contrast is present in the esophagus. And if the contrast is present in the esophagus, what is the name of the study? The name of the study is barium swallow. This is barium swallow. Whereas, where is the contrast here? This is stomach and this structure is duodenum. This is duodenum. And when the contrast is present in stomach and duodenum, stomach and duodenum, what is the name? This is barium meal. This is barium meal and a barium swallow and barium meal. Okay. Uh, Purvanjali, don't worry, bache, theory bhi revise karenge. But pehle images dekh lete hain ek baat. Okay, na? We're gonna revise the theory also. Don't worry about it. Now, what do we see here? What do we see here? This is stomach. This is duodenum. And majorly, I am seeing lot of small bowel. Lot of small bowel. So, when I can see only stomach and duodenum, it is barium meal. When I am seeing small bowel, this is barium meal follow through. Then this investigation is barium meal follow through. And when I am seeing what structure, what do we see here? What do we see here? This all is large bowel. Large bowel. And when I am seeing the dye in the large bowel, what is the name of the investigation? The name of the investigation is barium enema. The name of the investigation is barium enema. Okay. So very, very important. A question to in me se aana hi aana hai. Barium swallow pe, meal pe, follow through pe, enema pe, IVP pe, MCU pe, RGU pe. One of them is gonna be there in the exam without a doubt. Okay. Now, second pattern. This was a radiography based. Now, let us see the second pattern. You remember what is the name of this investigation? This is ultrasound. This is ultrasound and when you have got convex kind of erect, convex kind of image, it is done with which probe? It is done with the low frequency probe. It is done with the low frequency probe. Now quickly tell me what is the range of the frequency in the low frequency probe? What is the range of the frequency? 225 or 227 megahertz. The probe range of the frequency is 225 or 227 megahertz 2 to 5 or 2 to 7 megahertz it is done for thick and deep body part it is done to see thick and deep body structures okay what are this what is this this is a pelvic ultrasound this is a pelvic ultrasound and this structure black black structure that you can see is urinary bladder and this structure that you could see is what this is uterus this is uterus okay on the other hand if you see a rectangle or a square shape image, a rectangle or a square shape image, this is done with a high frequency probe. High frequency probe. Ab quickly se bata do, high frequency probe ki frequency kitni hoti hai. What is the frequency of a high frequency probe? High frequency probe, 7 to 15 megahertz. 7 to 
15 megahertz high frequency probe is 7 to 15 megahertz now this is a thyroid ultrasound this is a thyroid ultrasound this structure that you can see is what this is the thyroid gland this is a thyroid gland okay now who will tell me what is this this is tvs what is tvs trans vaginal sonography this is tvs trans vaginal sonography look at the clarity of the uterus and the endometrial lining in a transvaginal sonography because you are going very very close to the structure and it is done using a high frequency probe it is done using a high frequency probe now a convex probe looks like this a linear probe is flat and this is an endocavitary or a transvaginal probe okay now if somebody asks me what is the most important role of ultrasound what will be your answer the most important role of ultrasound is to differentiate solid lesion from cystic lesion most important role of ultrasound is to differentiate a solid lesion from a cystic lesion and who will tell me what is the single most important sign that can help me in differentiating it the single most important sign that can differentiate a solid lesion from a cystic lesion solid lesion from a cystic lesion what is this it is acoustic enhancement acoustic enhancement what is acoustic enhancement if you see a lesion and you see more brightness behind the lesion or posterior to the lesion this is called as acoustic enhancement increase brightness behind a fluid containing lesion is called as acoustic enhancement any lesion that shows acoustic enhancement is a cystic lesion any lesion that does not show acoustic enhancement is a solid lesion and any lesion that shows acoustic enhancement is a cystic lesion so this is definitely a cystic lesion now what will you tell me what is this is this a solid lesion or a cystic lesion quickly tell me is it a solid lesion or a cystic lesion you will say sir it is so simple there is no posterior acoustic enhancement and if there is no posterior acoustic enhancement it has to be a solid lesion it has to be a solid lesion you know? so the most important role of ultrasound is to differentiate a solid lesion from a cystic lesion you know? what sign acoustic enhancement okay now let's see this image what is this image this is the ultrasound image of the right hypochondrium right hypochondrium what do we see this structure is liver this is liver and what is this structure what is this structure this structure is kidney kidney now i have a question for you remember it surgery ka bhi question hai most dependent part of the peritoneum in the supine position likh do jaldi se answer most dependent part of peritoneum in the supine position you are remembering kya hota hai kya hota hai and immediately correct answer aa jayega dimag ke andar kya morrison's pouch morrison's pouch aur erect mein kya hota hai pouch of douglas hota hai in the supine position it is morrison's pouch in the erect position it is pouch of douglas pouch of douglas so what is the morrison's pouch ye liver aur kidney ke beech ki jo space hai the space between liver and kidney this is called as morrison's pouch जब हम फास्ट करते हैं वेन यू लुक एट दी फास्ट एंड यू वॉन्ट टू लुक एट दी कलेक्शन ऑफ दी ब्लड इन दी एबडोम दिस इज दी प्लेस वेर यू वॉन्ट टू चेक इट मॉरिसन पाउच द फर्स्ट साइट इन दबडोम दैट यू आर चेकिंग इज दिस ओनली मॉरिसन पाउच बिटवीन द लिवर एंड दी किडनी है ना लिवर एंड द किडनी एग्जाम में ये सुपाइन और इरेक्ट की गलती नहीं करनी है ना सुपाइन में मॉरिसन इरेक्ट में पाउच ऑफ डगलस ये गलती नहीं करनी है याद रखना है ठीक है चलो गुड all right now tell me what is the sign that has been shown here what is the sign this black black structure that we are seeing is what this structure is gall bladder gall bladder and i am seeing a white white structure here and it is showing more blackness behind what is the name of this sign this is called as acoustic shadow this is called as acoustic shadow acoustic shadow is a marker of calculus acoustic shadow is a marker of calculus okay because the beam comes and gets reflected there is a complete reflection 
of the beam. So this is acoustic shadow in gallstone. So I have a question for you over here. I am just writing it down. I am making a box. I am making three rows into this gallstone CBD stone renal stone. You have to fill the second column. You have to write the investigation of choice in them. Gallstone, CBD stone, renal stone. Tell me the investigation of choices for all the three. What are the investigation of choice for all the three? For the gallstone, it is ultrasound. For the CBD stone, it is MRCP. For the renal stone, it is NCCT. Tino stone hai, but the investigation of choice is different. For the gallstone, it is ultrasound. For the CBD stone, it is MRCP. And for the renal stone, it is non-contrast CT. Non-contrast CT. Okay. Chalo. Now, what is this? Tell me. This is urinary bladder. Okay. Why it is urinary bladder? That examiner has to write it down. This black black area is urinary bladder. It contains normal urine. And normal urine is fluid. And that is why you are seeing more whiteness behind this urinary bladder. So this is nothing but the normally distended urinary bladder. It is nothing but the normally distended urinary bladder. Okay. The most important role of ultrasound is to differentiate a solid lesion from a cystic lesion. For a thick and deep body part, you're going to use a low frequency probe. For a thin and superficial body part, you're going to use a high frequency probe. Okay. Now, just quickly tell me, what is the name of this machine? Which machine is this? Which machine is this? Remember, CT is a ring. MRI is a cylinder. CT is a ring. MRI is a cylinder. So thickness of the CT is very very thin. Thickness of MRI is like a tunnel. MRI is like a tunnel. So this imaging, this machine is MRI. This machine is CT. This machine is CT. So now let us come to the first point which lot of students still have a confusion. Examiner ne image de di aur pucha batao ye kya hai. Is it a CT or is it an MRI? How will we identify this? What do you need to see? You would like to see what? You would like to see the cortical bone. If the cortical bone is white, it is CT. If the cortical bone is white, it is CT. So the cortical bone is very very white over here. So this is definitely a CT scan. Please remember the terminology of the CT scan will always be dense. So it will be hypodense, hyperdense, hypodense, hyperdense. If I ask you what is the appearance of CSF here, what is your answer? You say it is black on CT. So this has to be hypodense. Hypotense. Okay. Now tell me, is it a CT or an MRI? Is this image CT or an MRI? You will say, sir, cortical bone is so wide. So this also has to be CT. Okay. Tell me, is this image CT or MRI? Cortical bone is so wide. Again, it has to be CT. Then what is the difference between them? Then what is the difference between these three images? So please remember, this is CT scan in transverse plane. This is in coronal plane and this is in sagittal plane. Transverse plane, coronal plane and sagittal plane. So CT can be done in any of the plane, a transverse plane, a coronal plane and the sagittal plane. Okay, now I have another question for you. Tell me image number one, image number two. Tell me which one is CT, which one is MR? Which one is CT, which one is MR? My answer is cortical bone is white, then this is CT, cortical bone is white here, it is also CT, both are CT, then what is the difference? This is called as CT scan in bone window, this is called as CT scan in lung window, what is this window? In a CT scan, you can identify one structure better than the other, so when the lung parenchyma is better seen, this is called as lung window, when the bone is better seen, this is called as bone window. So, if you want to see a fracture, it should be CT scan in bone window. When you want to see lung parenchyma, it should be CT scan in lung window. And that is how you have to identify them. 
ओके सो नाउ आई हैव अनदर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इमेज नंबर वन इमेज नंबर टू टेल मी विच वन इज सिटी विच वन इज एम आर आई इमेज नंबर वन इमेज नंबर टू विच वन इज सिटी विच वन इज एम आर आई वट इज योर आंसर योर आंसर इज सर बोन इज वाइट इन बोथ तो वाई वाई यूर सींग एम आर आई बोथ आर सिटी बोथ आर सिटी आई से वेरी गुड नाउ टेल मी विच वन इज एन सी सिटी विच वन इज सीई सिटी विच वन इज एन सी सिटी विच वन इज सीई सिटी Now tell me which one is N C C T, which one is C C T. So what you have to do is you have to see this structure. What is this structure? This is a blood vessel. This is a blood vessel, and you have to compare the blood vessel with this structure. What is this structure? This is a muscle. Compare blood vessel with the muscle. If the blood vessel and muscle are equally are looking same, if the muscle and vessel are looking exactly same, it's a non-contrast city. If the vessel is white, then the muscle, it's a contrast in density. याद क्या रखना है? Bone से compare नहीं करना. You are not supposed to compare it with the bone. You are supposed to compare it with the muscle. If the muscle and vessel are exactly same, it's a non-contrast city. If the vessel is white, then the muscle, then it's a contrast in density. But catch here, this is about intravenous contrast. This is about the intravenous dye. When the dye is given into the intravenous system, what about the oral dye? So now I have two more images for you. Image number one, image number two. Tell me in which investigation oral dye is given? In which investigation oral contrast is not given? Tell me. Out of these two images, in which image oral contrast is given? in which image oral contrast is not given so that has to be identified on the basis of bowel loop that has to be identified on the basis of bowel loop if the bowel loop are white oral contrast is given if the bowel loops are white oral contrast is given look at the bowel loop here look at the bowel loops here look at the bowel loops here so much whiteness this is because of the oral contrast so that means in the second image oral contrast is given in the first image not given okay na so we need to identify ct we need to identify the plane we need to identify whether the intravenous contrast is given or not and we also need to identify whether the oral contrast is given or not okay now tell me i have got two more images for you tell me which image is ct which image is mri which image is is ct which image is mri one or two which one is what so you will say one is mri why one is mri because the cortical bone is black two is also mri why two is also mri because the cortical bone is also black do not get confused by looking at this scalp this is scalp this structure is cortical bone is cortical bone okay If both are MRI, then what is the difference between them? If both are MRI, then what is the difference between them? So please remember, this is a T1 weighted MRI, and this is a T2 weighted MRI. The first image is a T1 weighted MRI, and the second image is a T2 weighted MRI. If somebody asks me what is the difference between T1 and T2, how will you differentiate them? How we need need to remember? How we need to remember? World War Two. World War Two. What is World War Two? Water is white on T two. Water is white on T two. Look at the CSF. CSF is so white. So this is T two. Look at the CSF. CSF is so black. So this is T one. World War Two. Water is white on T two. Okay. If you ever have a confusion. between the scalp and the bone so please remember always go from inner to outer rather than outer to inner that means this structure is ventricle after the ventricle what do you see is the bone uh, the brain parenchyma after the brain you should see meninges but what we need to remember we need to remember that the meninges are too thin to be seen on the imaging meninges are too thin to be seen on imaging so that means immediately after the brain parenchyma the structure that we are seeing is the cortical bone and if the cortical bone is black it has to be 
MRI. If the cortical bone is white, then it has to be CT. All right. Now let us see some very very blur images. If you see such blur images, then immediately you will switch from radiology to nuclear scan. If you see these blur images, then these images has to be nuclear scans. Nuclear scan. And in nuclear scan, look at the black spots. These black spots will tell you what is the name of the scan. You can see the activity in the brain because brain utilizes glucose. This is FDG PET. This is FDG PET. Black spots are present in the bones and that is why this is bone scan. This is bone scan. Thyroid gland. So this is thyroid scan. So nuclear scan, depending on where do you see the black areas, you will be able to localize the scan as FDG PET or bone scan or thyroid scan. Okay, now let us see who tells me this. Tell me what is the name of this scan? What is the name of this scan? What is the name of this scan? Let's see who gives me the correct answer. What is the name of this scan? What do we see? I am seeing a large black spot here. <coughs> large black spot here. Why we are seeing it? Tell me what can be present here. What is present as a structure over here? What do you think is present over here? What is present over here? So this is kidney and this is above the kidney. What is present in the above the kidney? Suprarenal gland. Suprarenal gland. And what is the tumor that is present in the suprarenal gland? MIBG. 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 And this is pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma. Okay, why we are seeing so much activity in the thyroid gland? Because it contains iodine hai na? and thyroid is going to take up the iodine. MIBG with iodine, hai na? so that is why thyroid can also take up this iodine. So this is the image of a pheochromocytoma. Okay, now let me see who can answer this. Okay, I am taking 15 seconds stop here. Tell me the name of this scan. Name of this scan. Let's see who can answer this. ऐसे क्वेश्चन आएगा ये स्कैन दे देंगे पूछेंगे इस इन्वेस्टिगेशन का नाम बता दो व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन अप्लाई योर ब्रेन एंड टेल मी द आंसर व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस स्कैन व्हाट डू सी यू आर सीइंग द लिवर एंड बिलियरी अपैरेटस यू आर सीइंग द लिवर एंड द बिलियरी अपैरेटस एंड बिकॉज़ यू आर सीइंग द लिवर एंड द बिलियरी अपैरेटस व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस स्कैन द नेम ऑफ दिस स्कैन इज हीडा स्कैन the name of the scan is HEDA scan. Very, very good. Those who have given the correct answer. Very, very good. Okay. All right. Now, let's see this image. What do we see here? What are these images? These are hybrid images. These are hybrid images. What do you mean by hybrid images? CT scan is combined with the PET scan. CT scan is combined with the PET scan. And now I have got a hybrid and this hybrid is called as PET CT. What is the biggest advantage of the PET CT? PET gives me the function and CT gives me the anatomy. PET gives me the function and the CT gives me the anatomy and that is why PET CT is the most useful. It is the most useful imaging investigation for staging of most of the cancers in the body. Most useful imaging investigation for staging of most of the cancers in the body is PET CT. If somebody asks you which investigation should be done for the staging, close your eyes and mark the answer as PET CT. There are very very high chances that you will be correct. But please remember, it is PET plus CT. Sometime examiner can play with you. They can give you this investigation and they can ask you, okay, tell me what is the name of this. 
so now don't get confused here this is a pet this is mri and this is pet mri that means pet can be combined with the ct pet can be combined with an mr so this is pet mr you know this is pet mr okay so guys if you have attended my class of the fmg previously it will be a good idea that open up your notes and quickly revise it along with that and you're going to gain much much more if you have not attended my class and you are just revising it then you will i will be giving you this pdf also after the class so that you can be it can be useful for you during your revision time but if you have already attended the class then notes ko open kar lo aur usi ke through hi to hum chal rahe hain na quickly saath mein revise karte chal ab aate hain kuch theories pe aur kuch क्लासिकल इमेजेस पे जो 100 परसेंट एग्जाम में आनी ही है तो सबसे पहले बात करेंगे ट्रॉमा हेड ट्रॉमा हेड ट्रॉमा का क्वेश्चन सबको पता है आना ही आना है अगर हेड ट्रॉमा का पेशेंट है तो क्या इन्वेस्टिगेशन करेंगे इफ द हेड ट्रॉमा पेशेंट इज देयर द फर्स्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन हैज टू बी डन इज एनसीसीटी इज एनसीसीटी क्या देखना है एनसीसीटी में शेप ऑफ द हेमेटोमा इफ द शेप ऑफ द हेमेटोमा इज बाई कॉन्वेक्स If the shape of the hematoma is biconvex, क्या बन गया? EDH बन गया. EDH. EDH के बारे में क्या क्या बातें याद रखनी है मिडल मैनेंजियल आर्टरी से ब्लीडिंग है कैन नॉट क्रॉस सूचर है एंड ल्यूसिड इंटरवल होता है ठीक है बिकॉज ऑफ सीवियर ट्रॉमा होगा बस इतनी सी बातें याद रखनी है EDH is because of the injury to the middle meningeal artery it cannot cross suture you will see the lucid interval and it is associated with the severe trauma with the severe trauma okay if the shape of the hematoma is this is this ye kya shape ho gayi crescent crescent then what is the answer sdh sdh what are the important points that you need to remember it is because of the rupture of bridging veins rupture of bridging veins can cross sutures can cross suture and can occur due to minor trauma also can occur due to minor trauma also and because it can occur due to minor trauma it could be acute it could be subacute or it could be chronic it could be acute it could be subacute or it could be chronic theek hai na to sdh bridging veins can cross suture and can occur due to minor trauma agar acute hoga to white hoga yani ki hyper dense hoga so that means this is acute if it is chronic then it will be hypodense hypodense that means this is chronic sdh and if it is nearly similar to the brain parenchyma look at this this is nearly similar to the brain parenchyma so this is isodense this is isodense and this is subacute sdh this is subacute sdh subacute sdh okay all right now let us see this now what is this this is hemorrhage within the brain parenchyma so what is the name this is intraparenchymal hemorrhage this is intraparenchymal hemorrhage intraparenchymal hemorrhage whereas what do we see here you can see small small hemorrhagic foci small small hemorrhagic foci at gray white matter junction If you are seeing small, small hemorrhagic foci at the gray white matter junction, what is your answer? Your answer is DAI, diffuse axonal injury, diffuse axonal injury. But now I am looking for a revision material. Who will tell me what is a characteristic triad of a diffuse axonal injury? नहीं बच्चे none of them is SAH. SAH नहीं है इसमें शुभम. अभी SAH देखेंगे. What is a characteristic triad of a diffuse axonal injury? Trauma. unconscious patient and normal nccct that means this ct may be seen only in 20% of the patient 
in 80% of the patient ct will be normal trauma unconscious patient and normal nccct if you see this then think of diffuse axonal injury what is a standard investigation of choice to diagnose diffuse axonal injury mri the standard investigation of choice to diagnose diffuse axonal injury is mri is mri okay so very very important yaad rakh lena ye slide ko yaad rakh lena is slide ka ek question exam mein aane ki possibility 90% se zyada hai more than 90% now tell me what are these where do we see the blood now i am seeing the blood going as some irregular lines entering into the cervical spaces entering into the fissure so the rule is the moment you see the blood in csf spaces the moment you see blood in the csf spaces your answer is subarachnoid hemorrhage what are the important examples of the cns csf spaces ventricles cistern sulci fissure whenever you are seeing the blood in the ventricle cistern sulci fissure your answer is sh the most common cause of sh is also trauma but sh can be a traumatic also sh can be a traumatic also and what is the most common cause of a traumatic sh likh do jaldi se most common cause of a traumatic sh pata chale yahi question aa raha hai is bar exam mein rupture of peri aneurysm rupture of peri aneurysm the most common cause of a traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage is rupture of peri aneurysm but what is the most common cause most common cause is trauma is trauma okay so to ye yaad rakhna hai ab ek thodi si ek choti si theory dekhte hain agar ek patient aapke paas hemiparesis ke sath aaya hemiparesis ke sath to kya karoge the first investigation that you gonna do will be nccct nccct why because you want to differentiate an ischemic stroke from the hemorrhagic stroke the first investigation that you would like to do is nccct to differentiate an ischemic stroke from the hemorrhagic stroke the idea is you want to decide that thrombolysis has to be done or not because thrombolysis is the treatment of choice for the ischemic stroke it is contraindicated in the hemorrhagic stroke now this can be done up to 4 and a half hour 4 and a half hour now the big question what is the finding of hemorrhagic stroke on a non contrast ct non contrast ct shows hyper dense intra parenchymal hematoma hyper dense intra parenchymal hematoma now what is the finding of ischemic stroke on a non contrast ct that depends less than 6 hr more than 6 hr less than 6 hr the ct is normal more than 6 hr it shows hypodensity it shows hypodensity so in the first 6 hr if you want to confirm acute ischemic stroke what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is mri investigation of choice is mri so that's a broad theoretical revision for the stroke now let us see the image now let us say this image is there in your paper and the examiner ask you what is the diagnosis you will say there is a hyperdense intraparenchymal hematoma and there is a hyperdense intraparenchymal hematoma so this is hemorrhagic stroke this is hemorrhagic stroke now tell me what is this what is this you will say ki sir isme bhi to white dikh raha hai main bolunga but bachche ye mri hai to what is the rule the rule is if you see white on ct it is hemorrhage if you see white on mr then it is ischemia if you see white on ct it is hemorrhage if you see white on mr then it is ischemia ओके, डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज स्टूडेंट क्या करते हैं व्हाइट देखते हैं व्हाइट देखते ही हेमरेज मार्क कर देते हैं नहीं इफ यू सी व्हाइट ऑन सिटी इट इज हेमरेज इफ यू सी व्हाइट ऑन एम आर देन इट इज स्कीमिया ओके नाउ लेट अस सी दीज टू इमेजेस नाउ आई वांट टू सी दीज टू इमेजेस टुगेदर एज सिंगल इमेज एंड दीज टू इमेजेस टुगेदर एज अ सिंगल इमेज नाउ लुक एट दिस एरिया लुक एट दिस एरिया लुक एट दिस एरिया लुक एट दिस एरिया 
there is hardly any abnormality in image number one but there is a clear cut abnormality in the image number two and what is the nature of abnormality what is the color hypodense or hyperdense in the second image what do you think what is the nature of abnormality is it hypodense or hyperdense you will say sir so simple it is hypodense this ct is done within six hours of symptom onset and this ct was done after 26 hours of the symptom onset so if you remember we wrote it after six hours even on the ct ischemic stroke appear hypodense so this is the area of ischemia this is the area of ischemia but that will only be seen after six hours within six hours it will be normal within six hours it will be normal okay so please remember trauma and the stroke are the two standard topic that are asked from the brain from the radiology the third thing that the examiner is very very fond of asking is calcification pattern in the brain so for the simplicity i have put all the images of a calcification pattern at one place so let us quickly revise them when you see the calcification along the ventricular system this is called as periventricular pattern periventricular and periventricular pattern is seen in cmv infection cmv infection whereas if you see large foci without any specific pattern this is called as diffuse nodular pattern diffuse nodular pattern which is seen in toxoplasmosis which is seen in toxoplasmosis ab dono torch infection hai dono mein calcification hai kaun yaad karega class mein class mein kya bataya tha what is the way that i told you to remember taaki exam mein confusion na ho hai na remember remember the way that i told you how to remember it anybody anybody who wants to tell how to remember ki toxo mein diffuse hoti hai cmv mein periventricular hoti hai yaad karo main delhi mein rehta hu Knot place has DT cinema hall. Knot place has DT cinema hall. C for CMV, P for periventricular, D for diffuse, T for toxoplasmosis. Knot place has DT cinema hall. C for CMV, P for periventricular, D for diffuse, and T for toxoplasmosis. Okay. Isko kya bolte hai? इस पैटर्न को है ना ब्रैकेट पैटर्न ब्रैकेट पैटर्न ब्रैकेट पैटर्न इज सीन इन कॉर्पस कैलोसल लाइपोमा कॉर्पस कैलोसल लाइपोमा है ना कॉर्पस कैलोसल लाइपोमा इसको क्या बोलते हैं यू सी स्मॉल स्मॉल कैल्सिफिक नोड्यूल इसको पेरीवेंट्रिकुलर से कंफ्यूज नहीं करना पेरीवेंट्रिकुलर देर इज अ शीट लाइक कैल्सिफिकेशन दीज आर सब एपेंडाइमल कैल्सिफिक नोड्यूल सब एपेंडाइमल कैल्सिफिक नोड्यूल एंड सब एपेंडाइमल कैल्सिफिक नोड्यूल्स आर सीन इन ट्यूबरस स्क्लेरोसिस सब एपेंडाइमल कैल्सिफिक नोड्यूल्स आर सीन इन ट्यूबरस स्क्लेरोसिस tuberous sclerosis okay what is this small small calcification scattered in the brain small small calcification scattered in the brain it looks like that there is a bright starry night to so starry sky pattern <coughs> starry sky pattern starry sky pattern is a feature of neurocysticercosis starry sky pattern is a feature of neurocysticercosis and what do you see here calcification along the gyri calcification along the gyri called as gyral pattern also called as tram track pattern a gyral pattern also called as tram track pattern which is a feature of sturge weber syndrome a gyral pattern or a tram track pattern is a feature of sturge weber syndrome sturge weber syndrome okay so calcification pattern is a very very important pattern that i want you to remember 
The next very very important pattern that you have to remember for the exam is the shape of skull. Shape of skull. What are the shapes of skull? When you see well defined black black lytic lesion in the skull, this is called as punched out lytic lesion. Punched out lytic lesion, also called as rain drop appearance. Punched out lytic lesion, also called as rain drop appearance, which is a feature of multiple myeloma. Which is a feature of multiple myeloma. When you see a large single irregular lesion with two or few with bizarre shape, these are called as geographic lytic lesion with beveled edges geographic lytic lesion with beveled edges and this is seen in eosinophilic granuloma this is seen in eosinophilic granuloma this pattern is called as silver beaten appearance silver beaten appearance which is a feature of raised ICT, raised intracranial tension, raised intracranial tension, whereas what do you see this? This is called as hair on end appearance. Hair on end appearance is a feature of thalassemia. Hair on end appearance is a feature of thalassemia, whereas what do you see this? This is called as salt and pepper appearance salt and pepper appearance which is a feature of hyperparathyroidism salt and pepper appearance is a feature of hyperparathyroidism and the last one is cotton wool skull cotton wool skull is a feature of paget's disease cotton wool skull is a feature of paget's disease so similarly to the calcification pattern shape of skull is also a very very standard pattern that the examiner is interested in asking and you should be able to answer it in the fraction of a second all right now let's come to the most important image for the exam and that is a normal chest x -ray. the examiner is very very fond of asking normal chest x-ray so you should know some normal parts of the chest x-ray so this is clavicle we all know that okay, no? bones examiner is very very fond of asking this projecting structure yaan dikh hai. this is coracoid process coracoid process okay, no? i don't think i need to tell you the shoulder joint you can identify now the biggest challenge is the ribs you should be able to identify or you should be able to count the ribs on the x-ray in the fmg screening exam january they also asked it there are chances that they may ask it again the point to be noted dekho, first rib aise hota hai. Ye first rib hai. now the point to be noted is that the posterior end of the first rib and the second rib tends to overlap each other so yani ki ye first rib hai aur ye second rib hai. are you getting it but now the point to be noted okay let me remove the clavicle it is confusing you now the point to be noted over here is that the posterior end goes right up to the midline because it has to attach to the transverse process but the anterior end is attaching to the costal cartilage and the costal cartilage is attaching to the sternum here now we know on a chest x-ray cartilage is not seen and that is why the anterior end of the rib does not reach up to the midline anterior end is only like this all these oblique ends that you are seeing are the anterior ends whereas all these ends which are going right up to the midline 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 are what these are posterior ends okay all these are posterior ends okay now the point to be noted is first and second rib posterior end is overlapping onto each other so this is one this is two this is three and this is four in the last year exam they asked the right posterior four next time they may ask you a fracture and they ask you to count it they may mark another rib and they should be able to you should be able to answer it okay now the point is 
please see this what is this part this is cp angle and, and to be more precise lateral costophrenic angle it is not anterior it is not posterior it is lateral costophrenic angle if more than 150 ml of the fluid is present in the pleural cavity this will be obstructed so that means at least 150 ml of the fluid is required to cause blunting of the costophrenic angle on the chest x-ray that's a very very important point that i want you to remember okay now let us see this this is heart okay this is the right heart border and this is the left heart border you all know right heart border and left heart border i will not tell you right heart left heart border in the revision class i will tell you bas ye batao apex kon banata hai who makes the apex so apex is made by left ventricle in most of the cases but kya yaad rakhna tetralogy of the fellow may apex banata hai right ventricle in normal chest x-ray apex is formed by the left ventricle but in tetralogy of the fellow apex of the heart is formed by the right ventricle one second important point yaad rakhna ye kya hai तो ये बेस नहीं है ये क्या है ये इंफीरियर बॉर्डर है लोगों को लगता है ये बेस है बेस नहीं है ये ये इंफीरियर बॉर्डर है क्योंकि जो बेस होता है बेस इज अपोजिट टू एपेक्स इंफीरियर बॉर्डर इज फॉर्म बाय द राइट वेंट्रिकल प्लस लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल वेर एज इफ समबडी आस्क मी बेस आई विल से भाई बेस तो पोस्टीरियर है एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज फॉर्म बाय द राइट एट्रियम प्लस लेफ्ट एट्रियम इंफीरियर बॉर्डर इज फॉर्म बाय द राइट वेंट्रिकल प्लस लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल बेस इज फॉर्म बाय द राइट एट्रियम प्लस लेफ्ट एट्रियम ओके ओके अब देखो लेट सी सम ऑफ द इमेजेस सी दिस इमेज फर्स्ट व्हाट डू वी सी सी द लेफ्ट सीपी एंगल सी द राइट सीपी एंगल राइट सीपी एंगल इज ब्लंटेड सो देयर इज अ राइट साइडेड प्लूरल इफ्यूजन विदाउट अ डाउट व्हाट डू वी सी हियर अगेन राइट सीपी एंगल इज ब्लंटेड and there is a right pleural effusion what do you see here left cp angle is blunted and you see a meniscus sign again this is a left pleural effusion okay i have a question for you a student asked me ye kya hai what is this what is this what is this structure this is the breast shadow This is the breast shadow. Okay, examiner might show you a, a, a chest X-ray where only one breast is seen, second breast is not seen. It is most likely post mastectomy. That means breast cancer. The patient got mastectomy or okay, and that is a usual X-rays that we show to first year radiology resident. Okay, now tell me what is this? What do you see here? देखो, दिस इज हाउ द लंग्स आर गोइंग अप टू दी चेस्ट वॉल वट इज है लंग्स आर नॉट गोइंग अप टू दस्ट वॉल लेफ्ट सीपी एंगल इज ब्लंटेड एंड द फ्लूड इज गोइंग लाइक दिस फ्लूड इज नो बिजनेस टू गो अप लाइक दिस इन अ प्लूरल इफ्यूजन इट फॉर्म्स अस का साइड द फ्लूड इज गोइंग अप लाइक दिस बिकॉज द ग्रेविटी इज एक्टिंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड दैट मीन दिस एक्सरे इज नॉट इरेक्ट दिस एक्सरे इज टेकन इन दिस पोजिशन and when the x-ray is taken in this position what is this called as this is called as lateral decubitus view lateral decubitus view and if somebody ask me i will say lateral decubitus view is done for minimal pleural effusion <coughs> it is the <coughs> It is done for minimal pleural effusion. Okay, कितना fluid? Ten to fifteen mL. As little as ten to fifteen mL of the fluid can be seen on a lateral decubitus view. Okay, now tell me, tell me what is this? What do we see here? I can see lot of air here. I can see lot of air here. This air is traversed by the vascular marking. There is vascular marking here, but I don't see any vascular marking in this area. 
रिमेंबर द रूल इफ द एयर इन थोरैक्स इज डिवॉइड ऑफ वेस्कुलर मार्किंग इफ द एयर जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकेंड If the air in the thorax is devoid of vascular marking, then this is pneumothorax. So, how do you identify whether the air is present in the lung or whether the air is present in the pleura is vascular marking? Okay. Now the point to be noted is what is this? This is also pneumothorax. This is also pneumothorax. Now tell me what is this? This is also pneumothorax. but see the difference look at the trachea here trachea is shifted towards the opposite side look at the diaphragm diaphragm is shifted down that means the air is under pressure that means it is pushing the structure and whenever the air is under pressure and it is pushing the structure it is tension pneumothorax when the diaphragm has its normal position when the trachea is in the midline it's a non tension pneumothorax when the trachea is shifted towards the opposite side diaphragm is shifted down it's a tension pneumothorax ye kya hua what is this i can definitely see pneumo but now air is not going up to the cp angle rather i can see a straight line my radiology book says there are no straight lines on an x ray if you see a straight line it represents a fluid level so that means air is at the top fluid is at the bottom and i see an air fluid level And if I am seeing an air fluid level, my answer is it is a hydro pneumothorax. Then it's a hydro pneumothorax. Okay, so that is how you are going to differentiate them. So this is pneumothorax, pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax, and this is hydro pneumothorax. Hydro pneumothorax. Examiner is very very fond of asking if I will say I will say make marks, star marks. है ना star mark मार लेते हैं. स्टार मार्क एग्जाम के बाद देखेंगे जहां जहां स्टार मार्क मारे हैं काम किए कि नहीं चलिए ये पीजी का यूजुअल क्वेश्चन है बट आजकल डिफरेंस बहुत कम होता जा रहा है तो ये इमेज हमें पक्का आनी चाहिए दो ये अल्ट्रासाउंड की इमेजेस है दीज आर एम मोड अल्ट्रासाउंड क्लास में मैंने पढ़ाई हुई है ठीक है ना बट जरूरी नहीं आपने क्लास अटेंड की हुई हो तो पता होनी चाहिए हमें क्या बोलते हैं साइंस को इसका क्या नाम है दिस इज सी शोर साइड विच इज नॉर्मल विच इज नॉर्मल सी दिस यू सी स्ट्रेट स्ट्रेट लाइन हेयर एंड देन यू सी अ डिमार्केशन ऑफ दिसरल प्लूरा एंड अ ग्रेनी अपियर आफ्टर दैट दिस इज कॉल्ड सी शोर साइड विच इज नॉर्मल वेर इज वट यू सी हेयर यू आर सींग जस्ट स्ट्रेट स्ट्रेट लाइन देर इज नो डिमार्केशन बिटवीन दैटल एंड दिसरल प्लूरा this is what is called as barcode sign or stratosphere sign barcode sign or stratosphere sign barcode sign or stratosphere sign is seen in pneumothorax barcode sign or stratosphere sign is seen in pneumothorax okay so that means in today's time if somebody ask me i will say अल्ट्रासाउंड कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज टू डायग्नोज न्यूमोथोरेक्स एक्सरे तो डेफिनेटली होता ही है अल्ट्रासाउंड कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज टू डायग्नोज न्यूमोथोरेक्स ओके अब बताओ ये क्या वट इज दिस आई कैन सी इल डिफाइंड ओपैसिटी इल डिफाइंड ओपैसिटी बायोलैट्रली पेरी हाइलर रीजन बायोलैट्रल पेरी हाइलर कंसोलिडेशन Bilateral perihilar consolidation, and if you see bilateral perihilar consolidation, what is the first disease that should come to your mind? Cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and this is called as bat wing sign or bat wing appearance. Bilateral perihilar consolidation is called as bat wing appearance. and this is seen in cardiogenic pulmonary edema 
cardiogenic pulmonary edema now who will tell me what is the earliest sign of pulmonary venous hypertension what is the earliest sign of pulmonary venous hypertension earliest sign of pulmonary venous hypertension upper lobe diversion of the blood upper lobe diversion of the blood which is called as reverse mustach sign upper lobe diversion of the blood which is called as reverse mustach sign bat wing is not the earliest sign the earliest sign is upper lobe diversion of the blood okay now tell me what is this what do we see is it a ct or an mri this is definitely a ct scan is it a non contrast ct or a contrast in an ct this definitely a contrast in an ct this is definitely a contrast in an ct what are the structures what is this structure this structure is ascending aorta what is this structure this structure is descending aorta what is this structure this is pulmonary artery ascending aorta descending aorta and pulmonary artery what do we see i can see a filling defect in the pulmonary artery i can see a filling defect in the pulmonary artery and if i am seeing the filling defect in the pulmonary artery what is my answer my answer is pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism okay a theoretical question here what is the screening test for pulmonary embolism what is a preferred screening test for pulmonary embolism what is the answer answer is d dimer which is a blood test what is the investigation of choice to diagnose pulmonary embolism the investigation of choice to diagnose pulmonary embolism is ct pulmonary angiography investigation of choice to diagnose pulmonary embolism is ct pulmonary angiography all right tell me what do we see here this is a third star third star <coughs> what do we see see what is happening i can see a flap in the aorta here and the moment i can see a flap in the aorta like this this leaves no room for a confusion this is aortic dissection this is aortic dissection please remember if the patient of aortic dissection is stable the investigation of choice is ct angiography if the patient of aortic dissection is unstable then the investigation of choice is trans esophageal echocardiography in today's time aortic dissection is classified on the basis of stanford system or stanford classification as per the stanford classification there are two types of aortic dissection type a and type b a means ascending aorta is involved b means ascending aorta is not involved if the ascending aorta is involved it is a surgical emergency the treatment is essentially surgical if the ascending aorta is not involved the treatment is medical management control of blood pressure control of blood pressure is the treatment in this case control of blood pressure is the treatment in this case okay so what is the treatment what is this this is type b aortic dissection whereas what is this now in this case the dissection is involving ascending aorta and since it is involving ascending aorta it's a type a aortic dissection and since it's a type a aortic dissection the treatment is surgery the treatment is surgery now you have to tell me what is this is it type a or type b is it type a or type b here 
Descending aorta is involved, ascending aorta is involved. The moment ascending aorta is involved, this will become time A. The moment ascending aorta is involved, this will become time A. And that's an important point that I want you to remember. Okay? Sure. Good. Now quickly tell me what What is this X-ray that we are seeing? Definitely it's a chest X-ray. What is so peculiar about this chest X-ray? In this chest X-ray, I can see multiple dot 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 nodules scattered in the bilateral lung parenchyma. Remember the rule, whenever you see small nodules, less than 5 millimeter scattered in the bilateral lung parenchyma, you have only one answer. What is this? This is miliary nodules. This is miliary nodule. So, this is very important. This is very ये जो हार्ट की शेप है दो आई एम गोना टीच यू हार्ट की शेप शेप ऑफ द हार्ट विल नेवर बी आस्क्ड एज एन आइसोलेटेड क्वेश्चन देयर विल बी अ क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री दैट विल बी गिवन तो ऑलवेज लुक एट दिस क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री इस पेशेंट की हिस्ट्री कैसी होगी लो ग्रेड फीवर वेट लॉस लो ग्रेड फीवर वेट लॉस है ना तो दैट इज द काइंड ऑफ हिस्ट्री दैट इज गोना बी ओके okay, चलो अभी आ ही गया आप बोल ही रहे थे तो देखो ये क्या है ये है टॉफ क्या दिख रहा है यहां पे ये दिख रहा है बूट शेप आर्ट बूट शेप आर्ट एंड देखो हाउ द एपेक्स इज अपटर्न बिकॉज दिस एपेक्स इज फॉर्म बाय द राइट वेंट्रिकल एंड सिंस इट अ बूट शेप आर्ट इट इज टॉफ एक बार क्विकली रिवाइज कर लेते हैं टेट्रोलॉजी व्हाट इज द टेट्राड हियर 1 2 3 4 क्या क्या है पल्मोनरी स्टेनोसिस राइट वेंटिकुलर हाइपरट्रॉफी बीएसडी एसडी ओवर राइडिंग ऑफ एटा पलमेस्टिनोसिस राइट वेंटिकुलर हाइपरट्रॉफी वीएसडी एंड ओवर राइडिंग ऑफ एटा अ टिपिकल अपियरेंस ऑफ अ बूट शेप हार्ट जबकि ये क्या है एग ऑन अ साइड और अ स्ट्रिंग अपियरेंस एग ऑन अ साइड or a string appearance which is a feature of transposition of great vessels egg on a side or egg on a string appearance is a feature of transposition of great vessel it is to be noted that if you get confused between these two look at the age of presentation this is usually present in the first week of life first week first day second day third day fifth day and this usually present in first year 5 month 7 month 9 month is the usual age of presentation for the tetralogy of fellow and so that's a very very big difference ye to bahut hi aasan hota hai ye kya what is this figure of it also called as snowman shape heart figure of eight also called as snowman shape heart which is seen in supra cardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous connection figure of eight heart or a snowman shape heart is seen in supra cardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous connection and what is this this is box shape heart box shape part box shape part is a feature of abstin anomaly okay abstin anomaly all right so ab batao ye kya what is this a dilated esophagus with a narrowing at the distal end kya bola gaya isko bird beak appearance bird beak appearance is a feature of achalasia बर्ड बीक अपियरेंस इज अ फीचर ऑफ एक्लेजिया बट याद रखना अगर बर्ड बीक में कंफ्यूजन हो रही है पैटर्न ऑफ डिस्फेजिया देखना मत भूलना द डिस्फेजिया विल बी प्रिडोमिनेंटली टू लिक्विड द डिस्फेजिया विल बी प्रिडोमिनेंटली टू लिक्विड ये दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट यू आर नॉट सपोज टू मिस दिस ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ यू सी दिस वेन यू सी डायलेटेड इज ऑफ एगस विद इरेगुलर लॉन्गर नैरोइंग this has been called as rat tail appearance rat tail is a feature of carcinoma esophagus 
But again, if you get confused, look at the history of dysphagia. Who will tell me first what is a typical pattern of dysphagia that will be seen in cancer esophagus? A typical pattern of dysphagia that will be seen in cancer esophagus. Dysphagia will be too solid. One second important point. Second important point: the dysphagia will be progressive. A progressive dysphagia to solid. Think of cancer. Think of cancer. Cancer can show rat tail, or cancer can also show disappearance. When you see marked narrowing with proximal shouldering, and what is this called as? This is called as apple core appearance. Apple core appearance. Apple core appearance. If you are seeing it on barium swallow, it will be seen in carcinoma esophagus. Obviously, if you are seeing it in barium anema, then it will be a feature of carcinoma colon also. Okay. If you see disappearance in barium swallow, ये तो ये तो एक सेकंड में बता दोगे आप लोग. है ना आंखें बंद भी हैं तो भी पता चल जाएगा क्या बोलते हैं इसको what do you call this as this is called as cork screw esophagus cork screw esophagus which is a feature of diffuse esophageal spasm cork screw esophagus is a feature of diffuse esophageal spasm what is this what do we see here? what we are seeing we are seeing that the esophagus is pushed up stomach is also pushed up and the g junction has also moved up and the stomach has herniated into the thorax so once the stomach has herniated into the thorax this is hiatal hernia this is hiatal hernia and the rule is if the g junction has also moved up this is sliding form of hiatal hernia so this is a sliding form of hiatal hernia a sliding form of hiatal hernia all right theek hai ek aur star maar dete coffee bean appearance coffee bean appearance is a feature of sigmoid volvulus coffee bean appearance is a feature of sigmoid volvulus okay those who have already read radiology well quickly see that how many images you are not able to identify it's a crime at this time not able to identify any of the image if you think that you've already covered it agar aapko lag raha hai ki aapne nahi padhi hui to aapko padhni hai agar aapko lagta hai aap already pad chuke ho to jitna main bata raha hu aapko pehle se aana chahiye so that will give you a confidence ki aap ek correct direction mein ja rahe ho theek hai na so we are not touching up any point that is not important for the exam now what is this what do we see here this is barium anema hai na barium anema this is rectum this is sigmoid colon now what do we see contrast filled out pouchings contrast filled out pouchings and a contrast filled out pouching is called as saw tooth appearance saw tooth appearance and saw tooth appearance is a feature of diverticulosis and examiner doesn't go in too much depth examiner ask straight forward question they're going to give you this appearance this image and they're going to ask you what is the name of this disease that's all and and one image of the barium is a standard image that is going to be there in the paper now what is this again it's a barium swallow and i can see another contrast fed out pouching but this time it is in the neck a contrast fed out pouching in the neck is called as what this is called as zenker's diverticulum contrast fed out pouching in the neck is called as zenker's diverticulum and zenker's Diverticulum. ये तो आपका फेवरेट इमेज है यू ऑल कैन आइडेंटिफाई मल्टीपल साइंस ऑफ द सेम डिजीज वट आर दिस साइन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कॉइल्ड स्प्रिंग अपियरेंस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज टेलीस्कोपिंग ऑफ वन सेगमेंट ऑफ बॉवल इन टू अनदर सेगमेंट विच इज कॉल्ड एज 
क्लोसाइन है ना देखो कैसे वन सेगमेंट ऑफ दॉबल हैज एंटर्ड इन टू अनदर सेगमेंट क्लोसाइन ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज पिंसर ग्रैस्प डिफॉर्मिटी क्लोसाइन और अ पिंसर ग्रैस्प डिफॉर्मिटी विच इज अ फीचर ऑफ इंटू सुसेप्शन एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज डोनट अपियरेंस do not appearance if you do an ultrasound this appearance has called as target sign on ultrasound so target sign do not sign claw sign pincer valve deformity coil spring all are seen in into susception all are seen in into susception okay this is barium minima barium minima what are we seeing in this barium minima i am unable to see any hostray I am unable to see any hostray. So what do I call this as? I call it as a hostral colon. A hostral colon also called a loss of hostrations. Loss of hostration also called a lead pipe appearance. Also called a lead pipe appearance, and this is seen in ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis. Now who will tell me? what are the features that are seen in crohn's disease crohn's disease what are the features that are seen in crohn's disease tell me first is skip lesions skip lesions string sign of can to skip lesions string sign of can to what do we see here what can we see we are seeing a chest x ray what is a peculiar feature of this chest x ray now this is a protocol that we will develop uh, we will remember suspected perforation the first investigation to be done is always a chest x ray remember is always a chest x ray what kind of chest x ray chest x ray erect and if the chest x ray erect shows air under right dome of diaphragm air under right dome of diaphragm that means there is a perforation and then immediately you have to do the exploratory laparotomy if the chest x ray does not show air under diaphragm there is still 30% chances that the perforation can happen and i would like to go with a ct scan i would like to go with a ct scan and this is a very very simple protocol that i want you to remember if somebody ask you what is the role of x ray abdomen erect and supine your answer is not usually done but you have to remember certain named signs that examiner have asked in the past regular sign football sign cupola sign and triangular tail sign and you need not to remember their images but you have to remember these names these are the x ray abdominal signs of perforation regular sign football sign cupola sign and triangular tail sign and triangular tail sign okay what do we see air under right dome of diaphragm over here air under left dome of diaphragm can be because of the stomach but air under right dome of diaphragm is perforation peritonitis okay if you see this appearance what is this you are seeing multiple air fluid levels multiple air fluid level and please remember multiple air fluid levels are diagnostic for sbu small bowel obstruction but now i have a question for you what is the investigation of choice for a small bowel obstruction investigation of choice is ct scan first investigation is x ray abdomen but the investigation of choice is ct scan because it will not just tell you the obstruction it will also tell you the exact level of the obstruction as well as the cause of the obstruction okay what is this what do we see here stomach is dilated first part of the duodenum is dilated so one bubble two bubble and this is called as double bubble appearance 
double bubble appearance this is called as double bubble appearance double bubble appearance is a feature of duodenal atresia double bubble appearance is a feature of duodenal atresia and what do we see here right hemi diaphragm is seen left hemi diaphragm is not seen and the bowel loops are herniating into the thorax the bowel loops are herniating into the thorax and this is a typical appearance of cdh congenital diaphragmatic hernia please remember it is of two type book dalek and morgagni jahan par bhi do diseases ek sath chal rahi hai wherever two diseases are going together it's an important mcq because examiner can confuse you there so remember b p l m a r book dalek posterior and left morgagni anterior and right bpl mar book dalek posterior left morgagni anterior right that means book dalek is present on the posterior and the left side and morgagni is present on the anterior and the right side in the book dalek usually it is the bowel loops that are herniating in morgagni it is usually the omental fat that is getting herniated that is getting herniated okay now tell me what is the name of this investigation this is next star mark is bar ke liye star mark hai what is the name of this investigation what do we see i can see the common bile duct i can see the pancreatic duct so now you have to tell me is it mrcp or is it ercp is it mrcp is it ercp so what you need to remember always look at endoscope always look at endoscope if the endoscope is not seen it is mrcp if the endoscope is seen it is ercp if the endoscope is not seen then it is mrcp if the endoscope is seen then it is ercp so endoscope is not seen here that means this investigation is mrcp whereas endoscope is seen here so this investigation is ercp so this is ercp this is mrcp okay mrcp and ercp now let's see these two images let's see these two images this is normal mrcp now tell me what is happening in this case what do we see in this case what is happening look at the cbd cbd is dilated cbd is dilated why cbd is dilated because there is a filling defect here because there is a filling defect here and this filling defect is nothing but coli docolithiasis coli docolithiasis all right so very very important point all right now the point to be noted is that there is high chances that the examiner can ask you a small point over here and that small point is a question related to biliary leak a question related to the biliary leak and biliary leak is usually post operative so please remember if somebody ask you a post operative and what surgery has been done cholecystectomy if somebody ask me i will say the first investigation to be done is ultrasound the first investigation to be done in a post operative patient is ultrasound why to look for collection to look for collection theek hai na do hi cheeze hongi collection seen collection not seen collection not seen observe collection seen put a pic tail put a pigtail pigtail pe kya dikha ya to pus dikha ya to bile dikha ya to pus dikha ya to bile dikha pus dikha to antibiotic start kar do bile dikha to look for site of leak look for site of leak who will tell me the site of leak mrcp ercp theek okay. hai which is best ercp 
बट वट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू डू एम आर सी पी क्योंकि एम आर सी पी नॉन इनवेजिव है बट बेस्ट क्या ई आर सी पी बाई ई आर सी पी इज बेस्ट बिकॉज इट कैन डायग्नोज दीक एज वेल एज यू कैन पुट अटेंट अक्रॉस है ना सो दिस इज दी पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव बाई लीक प्रोटोकॉल वेन विल यू डू अल्ट्रासाउंड when will you observe when will you put pigtail when will you do mrcp and when will you do ercp hai na pigtail pigtail to ultrasound guided aspiration hi ho gaya na that is how it is but agar aap se kisi ne ek one liner puch liya what is that one liner most sensitive investigation for post operative bile leak most sensitive investigation for post operative bile leak anybody who can tell me the answer most sensitive investigation for the post operative bile leak tell me the answer what is the answer answer is hida scan most sensitive investigation for the post operative bile leak is hida scan okay all right ab isko dekhte shape of skull humne padha shape of heart humne padha shape of vertebrae is another very very important topic that the examiner is interested in asking so let's quickly revise them if somebody ask you what is this shape so please remember this is called as bullet shape bullet shape vertebrae and bullet shape vertebrae are seen in achondroplasia bullet shape vertebrae are seen in achondroplasia if somebody ask you what is this this is called as fish mouth fish mouth fish mouth is seen in osteoporosis osteoporosis what is this we call it h shape h h shape is seen in sickle cell h shape is seen in sickle cell this is called as picture frame picture frame is seen in pagets picture frame is seen in pagets this is called as rugger jersey spike Rugger jersey spine. Rugger jersey spine is seen in renal osteodystrophy. Renal osteodystrophy. This is called as ivory vertebra. Ivory. Ivory is also seen in pagets. Ivory is also seen in pagets. What do we see here? One vertebra is collapsed. The intervertebral disc is maintained. If one vertebra is collapsed and the intervertebral disc is also involved, then this is port spine. However, if the intervertebral disc is maintained, then I call it as vertebra plana. And vertebra plana, if somebody asks me, vertebra plana, I will say it's a feature of eosinophilic granuloma, also called as histiocytosis. And the last image is very very easy, which everybody know. What is this called as? This is called as bamboo spine. which is seen in ankylosing spondylitis so these are the various shapes of the vertebrae for a quick revision i have placed them at one area which is a common thing that i want you should be able to answer it shapes of the vertebrae i am once again saying shape of the vertebrae shape of the heart and shape of the skull one of them is a standard question of the exam we have already seen how an ivp mcu rgu looks like now let us see some of the diseases in these x rays so first see this what is happening here this is an ivp what do we see in this ivp we are seeing that the two kidneys are joined in the midline like this when the two kidneys are joined in the midline like this this is called as horse shoe kidney this is also called as joining hand sign joining hand sign also called as flower vas appearance a joining hand sign or a flower vas appearance it is to be noted that the isthmus of this 
लाइज बिलो इंफीरियर मिजेंट्रिक आर्टरी इसमें ऑफ दी हॉर्शो किडनी लाइज बिलो इंफीरियर मिजेंट्रिक आर्टरी बिकॉज इंफीरियर मिजेंट्रिक आर्टरी डज नॉट अलाउ द इस्थमस टू गो अप बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स मिडलाइन पोजिशन If you see this appearance, you see the ureter and its terminal end is dilated and bulbous like this, and this is called as cobra head or adder head appearance. Cobra head or adder head appearance, which is a feature of ureterosy. Cobra head or adder head appearance is a feature of ureterosy. Okay, what is this? Normally, you have one kidney on this side and one kidney on this side. In this case, this kidney has moved to this side. So, don't consider it as a duplicated system. This is crossed ectopia because the kidney is ectopic and it has crossed the midline, and that is why this is called as crossed ectopia. Otherwise, normally ectopic kidney is present in the pelvis. Whereas, if you see this. I can see one ureter on this side and two ureters on this side. So when you see two ureter, this is what is called as duplicated system. This is what is called as duplicated system. Duplicated system. Spondylosis, spondylolysis, or lysis. हाँ, देखो डॉक्टर डीकेएच देख बच्चे स्पॉन्डाइलोसिस स्पॉन्डाइलोलिसिस एंड स्पॉन्डाइलोलिस्टसिस तीन चीजें हैं ठीक है ना स्पॉन्डाइलोसिस इज अ डिजेनरेटिव चेंजेस इन द स्पाइन व्हाट डू यू सी इन स्पॉन्डाइलोसिस ऑस्टियोफाइट्स ऑस्टियोफाइट यानी कि एक वर्टिब्रा ऐसी होगी एक वर्टिब्रा ऐसी होगी आपको ऐसे ऐसे ऑस्टिफाइड दिख जाएंगे ऑस्टिफाइड ठीक है देन है स्पोंडाइलो लिसिस स्पोंडाइलो लिसिस व्हाट इज स्पोंडाइलो लिसिस ब्रेक इन दी पार्स इंटर आर्टिकुलरिस ब्रेक इन दी पार्स आर पार्स इंटर आर्टिकुलरिस ये किस पे दिखता है ये दिखता है ओब्लिक एक्सरे ऑफ दी स्पाइन ओब्लिक एक्सरे ऑफ दी स्पाइन एंड द थर्ड थिंग इज स्पोंडाइलो लिसिस स्पोंडाइलोलिस्टिस तो पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड इज कि जब आप ओब्लिक एक्सरे करते हो तो एक साइन होता है इसको बोलते हैं स्कॉटिश डॉग साइन स्कॉटिश डॉग साइन स्पोंडाइलोलाइसिस में क्या हो गया ब्रेक इन द पार्स इंट्राटिकुलरिस हो गया तो उसको बोलते हैं स्कॉटिश डॉग वियरिंग अ कॉलर क्योंकि ब्रेक हो गया ना तो ऐसा लगता है उसने कॉलर पहनी हुई है स्कॉटिश डॉग वियरिंग अ कॉलर स्पोंडाइलोलिस्टिस इज स्लिपेज ऑफ वन वर्टिब्रा ओवर अनदर ना स्लिपेज ऑफ वन वर्टिब्रा ओवर अनदर इसको क्या बोला बी हेडेड स्कॉटिश डॉग साइन क्यों क्योंकि इसका जो हेड है वो अलग से दिखता है तो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज बी हेडेड स्कॉटिश डॉग साइन सो स्पंडाइलोसिस इज डिजेनरेटिव चेंजेस स्पंडाइलोलाइसिस इज ब्रेक व्हिच इज स्कॉटिश डॉग वियरिंग अ कॉलर एंड स्पंडाइलोलिस्टिस इज बी हेडेड स्कॉटिश डॉग साइन करेक्ट ओके चलो Tell me, diagnosis of this case. What do we see? If anterior urethra is so very well seen, always remember that this is an R G. Okay, so this is penile urethra. ठीक है ना? This is bulbar urethra. Normally, bulbar urethra should be bigger than the penile urethra, but now I am seeing the narrowing in the bulbar urethra. and the moment you are seeing narrowing in the bulbar urethra so this is an image of a bulbar urethral structure this is an image of a bulbar urethral structure please remember it is the most common part of the urethra to be injured most common part of the urethra to be injured is bulbar urethra but you also have to remember most common part of the urethra injured associated with pelvic fracture is membranous urethra yani ki in the history 
if rta or pelvic fractures are given then your answer will be membranous urethra if a bicycle injury or a straddle injury is given then your answer will be bulbar urethra okay so that's an rgu showing bulbar urethra structure okay what do you see in this mcu in this mcu normal bladder should have this shape but what is happening in this case in this case the bladder has assumed a shape like this and it is showing multiple diverticulae like this if i put a stem over there this will become a perfect what perfect christmas tree perfect christmas tree which is seen in neurogenic bladder christmas tree bladder is neurogenic bladder whereas what do we see here you can see the bladder the posterior urethra is markedly dilated and the anterior urethra is normal because there is a block here and this is called as keyhole appearance this is called as keyhole appearance and keyhole appearance is a feature of posterior urethral wall and in this mcu there is something very very strange that is happening this is bladder the dye is refluxing into the ureters because the dye is refluxing into the ureter this is vesico ureteric reflux this is vesico ureteric reflux images of the ivp mcu rgu is also a standard topic that the examiner is very very interested in asking very very interested in asking okay now what is this we have already seen this this is a trans abdominal sonography showing bladder and uterus whereas what is this anybody you can tell me what is this this is a twin pregnancy this is a twin pregnancy in a twin pregnancy what can happen is you can see two embryo in the same sac and that is what is called as mono amniotic pregnancy you can see the two embryo separated by a thin line and this is called as t sign which is seen in mono chorionic diamniotic pregnancy or you can see two embryos separated by thick chorion as well as amnion which sign is called as lambda sign and this is seen in dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy so what do you see here when you see a thick membrane or a thick structure it is a lambda sign so this is a dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy dichorionic or a diamniotic pregnancy and this is the normal gravid uterus of early pregnancy normal gravid uterus of the early pregnancy when the scan is done at around 5 to 6 weeks which is called as what which is called as dating scan which is called as dating scan why this is called as dating scan because this is considered to be the most accurate way to give expected date of delivery in today's time okay it is to be noted that whenever you are doing any antenatal ultrasound you have to fill a form and this is called as form f this form f is a declaration that while doing the ultrasound you have not declared or detected the sex of the fetus to anybody in any manner and this is as per which law this is as per pcpndt act what is pcpndt pre conception prenatal diagnostic technique prevention of its misuse act pre conception prenatal diagnostic technique prevention of its misuse act okay so form f very very important point that i want you to remember and this is how the normal fetus is seen in the mid pregnancy this is the leg of the fetus this is the abdomen this is the chest this is the face this is the skull and this is the backbone remember this image okay why do you need to remember if you see an abnormal protrusion here this disease will become omphalocele if you see this area is not there this disease will become anencephaly 
if you see an abnormal protrusion in the back this disease will become meningocele and a meningocele anything can happen if you see more subcutaneous tissue here this will become increased nuchal translucency which is a screening test for the down syndrome so all these can be seen on this are you getting it for example what is not seen or extra seen in this case leg is seen abdomen is seen chest is seen face is seen but skull is not seen so if skull is not seen what is this this is gonna become an encephaly this is gonna become an encephaly are you getting it so please remember it this is a normal ultrasound that you need to remember and this is the image of a doppler image of a doppler what do we see in this image of a doppler anybody who can tell me what are we seeing in this image of a doppler this is the doppler of the uterine artery normally you have a systolic flow and then you should have a diastolic flow now there is a dip in the early diastole and what is this called as this is called as early diastolic notch early diastolic notch early diastolic notch is a sign of pih if you see a diastolic notch in the uterine artery on doppler it's a sign of pih it's a sign of pih very very important point that i wanted to remember and these are the last few doppler images this is the normal doppler of the umbilical artery normal doppler of the umbilical artery see you see lot of systolic flow and a lot of diastolic flow whereas what is happening in this case see systolic flow to hai diastole itna hona chahiye tha bahut kam ho gaya so i call it as a decrease in diastolic flow decrease in diastolic flow it is to be noted that this is the earliest sign of utero placental insufficiency it is the earliest sign of utero placental insufficiency and if you see this sign what do you see you see flow in a systole but you don't see any flow in a diastole there is a flow in a systole but there is no flow in a diastole and this is called as absent diastolic flow absent diastolic flow which is a sign of severe iugr absent diastolic flow is a sign of severe iugr and what do you see here more flow in systole but reverse of flow in diastole and this is a sign what is called as reversal of diastolic flow reversal of diastolic flow which is a sign of impending fetal death reversal of the diastolic flow is a sign of impending fetal death okay very very important doppler parameters okay and what are these these are abnormal hsg images let us quickly see what do we see in these images this is uterus and i can see bilateral fallopian tubes are dilated so what do you call this as bilateral hydrocelpings bilateral hydrocelping whereas what do we see here you can see only one cornua of the uterus so i call it as a uni cornuate uterus uni cornuate uterus whereas what do you see here both the horns are seen but fallopian tube seen on one side that means there is a block here and this is called as cornual block cornual block because the block is just at the horn whereas what is this this i do not know this could be a septate uterus or this could be a bicornuate uterus so the simplest form is draw a tangent like this draw a longitudinal axis and make this angle this is called as intercornual angle intercornual angle and just remember only very very small point if the intercornual angle is acute means less than 90 degree it is a septate uterus if it is obtuse that means more than 90 degree 
then it's a biconvert uter that's all there is no other point interconvert distance of 4 cm more than 4 cm don't remember 60 degree 70 degree 70 to 105 degree more than 5 degree nahi yaad karna ek hi baat yaad rakhni hai agar acute hai to septate hai obtuse hai to biconvert hai bas khatam hai na that's all chal so that's about the image part theory may there are certain tables that i want you to remember these are factual table you have to memorize them so the first table that you need to remember is that the amount of radiation in various radiological procedure just to make life simpler i have written all the tables over here we're gonna quickly revise them chest x-ray it is 0.02 millisievert for a mammography it is 0.2 to 0.8 millisievert for an IVP, it is 2.5 millisievert. For a barium minima, it is 7 millisievert. For a CT chest, it is 8 millisievert. For a CT head, it is 2.3 millisievert. For an abdomen, it is 10 millisievert. And for a bone scan, it is 4 millisievert. Please make sure that one day before the exam, you have memorized this table once again. Then the second table is the radiation limit for various categories. For the patient, radiation limit is 50 millisievert per year, whereas for occupational worker, it is 100 millisievert for 5 year period. For a pregnant patient, it is 5 millisievert per term, whereas for pregnant occupational worker, it is 2 millisievert for the declared term. That means till the time she declared to the employer that she is pregnant. For general public, it is 1 millisievert per year. 1 millisievert per year. That is another table that you have to revise it one day before the exam. Remember these two names. This is a symbol of biohazard or in radiology we call it as radiation hazard. That means wherever we are using the radiology equipment which is giving radiation, this equipment or this symbol has to be placed. What is this? This is a monitor which is called as TLD. It's a dose monitor also called as thermoluminescent dosimeter. Thermoluminescent dosimeter, it's a radiation monitoring device. Every occupational worker, it should be used. Every occupational worker, it should be used along with lead apron. They should also wear lead apron. And you also need to remember that the thickness of the lead in the apron is 0.5 millimeter. The thickness is 0.5 millimeter. Okay. Then from the radiotherapy, this is the most commonly asked table in the exam. A typical of most common and least common. Most sensitive stage of the cell cycle is G2M if given in the choice. If not given, then M. Least is S. Ovary and testis are most sensitive organ. Vagina, bone and CNS are least. Tissue, bone marrow, nervous tissue is least. Cell type, there is a law. This is called as law of Bargoni. As per law of Bargoni, more is the degree of undifferentiation. More is the sensitivity of the tissue to radiation. More is the degree of undifferentiation. More is the sensitivity of the tissue. To radiation whereas if it's a dormant cell or quiescent cell then it is resistant to radiation if it's a dormant cell or quiescent cell then it is resistant to radiation blood cell lymphocytes are most and platelets are least lymphocytes are most and platelets are least okay another table radio sensitivity of the tumors Easy way to remember is highly sensitive tumor. Remember this mnemonic WILMS. W for WILM, I or E for Ewings, L for Lymphoma, M for Myeloma, and S for Seminoma. WILMS, Ewings, Lymphoma, Myeloma, and Seminoma. Least, just remember it with a mnemonic HOM, Hepatoma, Osteosarcoma, Melanoma and pancreatic carcinoma hepatoma osteosarcoma 
melanoma and pancreatic carcinoma rest all are intermediate rest all are intermediate and this is the last list various half life that you need to remember technetium 99m has a half life of 6 hours iodine 123 has a half life of 13 hours iodine 125 has a half life of 60 days 131 has a half life of 8 days 132 has a half life of 2.3 hours phosphorus 32 14 days cobalt 60 5.2 years and iridium 192 74 days 18 fdg somebody has already spoken about it half life is 110 minutes and that's all and that completes our two hours of one shot radiology revision now this pdf i am putting it onto my telegram group which is rajas radiology review this is the uh, just give me a sec So I have shared the PDF onto my Telegram group. If you want this PDF, just join the group and you can take this PDF from that. Please remember, please revision is the biggest key. What you have to do in the month that is left for you, please do not try to look at here and there. Koi limit nahi hoti, padne ki, extra padne ki, koi limit nahi hoti. But jo aapne padha hai, you should be able to recall it in the exam. Ek do cheeze, नहीं पढ़ के जाओगे तो काम चल जाएगा बट जितना पढ़ा है उसको रिकॉल जरूर करना है इन्हीं चीजों को बार-बार पढ़ना है एंड यू हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट यू आर मेकिंग योरसेल्फ प्राउड यू आर मेकिंग योर पेरेंट्स प्राउड एंड यू आर मेकिंग ऑल ऑफ अस प्राउड देन वी कैन से कि देखो इस बच्चे को हमने पढ़ाया था और ये बच्चा पास हो गया है ना दैट इज दैट इज द एम दैट यू हैव टू टेक केयर इफ यू थिंक दैट आई कैन हेल्प यू आउट इन एनी फॉर्म डू लेट मी नो आई विल ट्राई माय लेवल बेस्ट that I can help you and support you in this stressful time. Okay, take care and may God